So this is the first section of chapter 10 on forces and motion, and this is on force diagrams. Now, the whole point of drawing a force diagram is it helps us visualize what's going on and it helps us with any equations that we really need to write down. So uh, diagrams that have basically these forces on uh, help us to visualize the question so any question that we have that we've been given and uh, get the right sign that's positive or negative for uh, any forces yeah now what i mean by the right sign is we're going to be doing questions where we need to write down equations and some forces are going to be positive, some are going to be negative. If we um, have a diagram, we can decide which forces are going to be positive and which ones are going to be negative. Often in a force diagram, we can represent a mass as a block like this. Or it might be that um, we have a, a particle like this. And again, we might write down what its mass is, but it's often useful to represent uh, the particle um, that's given in the question. It can be written, drawn as a rectangle or just like a, a dot, maybe a rectangle is a little bit easier to actually put the forces on. Right, so let's say we've got some sort of mass and it's being pulled along by some sort of pulling force. OK, so we've got a pulling force here. And that force is going in that, that direction. Let's say that it's on a rough surface. So you should know these definitions for rough, smooth particles. So let's say this is a rough surface and there's some friction trying to stop it from moving. So there'll be a, a frictional force going this way. Now, there'll also be a force of the actual weight of this object so it'll be the weight here on this surface here and then we have something called a normal reaction normal reaction and that's basically a bit like the force that this surface is pushing up into the mass to stop it from basically falling down okay now in this example here these forces the normal reaction and the weight would be balanced they would be exactly the same value and their values will be in newtons i'll just put this down so all the forces that we do all the questions that we do the value of the force will be in newtons always in newtons and in this direction the forces would be balanced. The normal reaction will equal the weight. Now, if I use R to represent the normal reaction and W for the weight, in this question, R would equal W. The forces are balanced in this direction because this mass is not moving up or down. But let's say it was moving sideways. Let's say that it was moving to the right it would mean that those forces are not balanced the pulling force would have to be greater than the frictional force we say that they're unbalanced and we have something called a resultant force basically the force that is left over so let's say the pulling force was 50 newtons and the result uh, the frictional force was 20 newtons so 50 pulling and 20 stopping it from trying to move that would give what we call a resultant force of 30 50 minus 20 gives us 30 so if we look at the forces going in this direction we would say that the pulling force let's call that um, p and the frictional force f the pulling force minus the frictional force equals something that we call the resultant force think of it like the leftover force the resultant force and 
basically whenever we do any questions to do with forces the forces will either be balanced or unbalanced forces are balanced when something is not moving later on you will we'll see the word equilibrium that means the same thing the forces are balanced also you'll see later on that the forces are balanced when something is moving at a constant speed but when forces are unbalanced we either have an acceleration or a deceleration depending on which force is the bigger force and we'll see that we can work out that acceleration by using Newton's second law and we'll see more of this later on and we can write it like this Newton's second law which basically says that when these forces are unbalanced the resultant force the force that's left over equals the mass times the acceleration but that comes later on so this f here is the resultant force the result that's left over when the forces are not balanced okay we're here we've got a block of weight w being pulled to the right by a force across a rough horizontal plane okay there's my rough horizontal plane here's my block of weight w okay so there's its weight so we'll put the weight going down here weight is in newton so we can just leave that as w we will have a normal reaction going that way anything that's on the surface there will be a normal reaction perpendicular to the plane it's on so let's put that down and normal does mean perpendicular so normal reaction is always perpendicular perpendicular to the plane now the plane is just the flat surface it's on not plants plane and it's being pulled to the right by a force p okay so it's pulled to the right by a force p and uh, if it's a rough horizontal plane we will have a frictional force here friction which we could probably use the letter f to represent so here's my force diagram showing all the forces acting on the block now r and w will be balanced because this object is not moving up or down these forces are equal and opposite but moving sideways depending on whether it's moving or not these forces will be unbalanced here but here's my force diagram which i can then use to help me solve problems so the diagram here shows the forces acting on the particle draw a force diagram to represent the resultant force okay so my particle is just represented by a little circle there like that now let's have a look at the forces going um, horizontally these are balanced can you see they're equal and opposite so the resultant force horizontally is zero newtons i could put that in there's no need but let's just put zero newtons is the resultant force I suppose i should put that in and that can be in either direction so i could do it either to the right or the left vertically however there's 30 up and 10 down the resultant force is going to be upwards because this is greater than this and it's only going to be 20 30 minus 10. so i will have a resultant force going up of 20 newtons so this diagram represents the resultant force so I'm guessing this will just be moving upwards because of the 20 going up so 30 minus 10. oh and in part b describe the motion of the particle um, the particle is just moving vertically upwards the particle is moving 
vertically upward or up. You should now be able to do exercise 10a on pages uh, 158 to 159. So just a reminder, when we've got something, let's say like this, the mass here will have its weight going down. We'll have a normal reaction, perpendicular reaction. So normal, I'll put the R um, in brackets because we normally use the letter R when we talk about normal reaction. We may have some sort of pulling force this way. And then if it's rough, then we'll have a frictional force this way. That's assuming this is the direction it's moving in, what well, it should be if it's got a pulling force going in this direction. And then the other thing is that the resultant force, you could think of as the left over force. So you've got a force going one way, a force going in the other way. Um, what do you get if you subtract one from the other? Okay, and the direction of movement will always be in the direction of the great, greatest force. So direction of movement or direction of motion will be in the uh, direction of the largest force or the larger force 